And welcome back AP Calc students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School and I'm very excited about the next series of videos that cover topic 1.3 from the course and exam description all about estimating limits from graphs. You're going to see quite a bit of this. It's going to gradually pick up its intensity. You'll perform some of these same kinds of uh, uh, problem solving techniques on the AP exam, but by and large, this is a pretty easy way that you can find a limit, just looking at it graphically. And it's so important to build your foundation of understanding limits by looking at them graphically. So let's get to know these guys. I want to give a special shout out to fellow AP Calculus teacher, Jerome White from New Orleans. He's a fellow AP Calculus reader, and he's also done some work with College Board uh, along with me for our AP daily video. So let's get graphical. So when we take a look at this particular topic from our notes, I'm gonna move my camera out of the way so you can kinda, kinda see my ugly face there. Let's go ahead and, and read this box together and make sure that we understand what the notation looks like and then introduce this brand new idea of the one-sided limit. So it says if we want to find the limit of f of x, as x approaches some value, let's call that value c, but we only want to do it from the left side. Well, what we would just simply do is say that that x is going to approach c with a little superscripted minus sign. It looks like a negative sign almost uh, written after the c, but slightly elevated. But that's exactly what we're going for there. That notation means that you're going to approach only from the left side. It probably seems logical that if you want to find the limit of f of x as x approaches some value of c from the right side, you'll say x approaches c with a little plus sign after the c. If you don't see a plus or a minus, the assumption is, is that you're approaching from both sides at the same time. And that those could certainly give some different results, and we're going to talk about that. Now, in order for that limit to exist from both sides, then the limit from the left side must equal the limit from the right side. They have to be the same thing, and we'll just call that thing L, L for limit. And so I want to keep those things in mind as we work through these problems. In order for a limit to exist, the function must be approaching the same y value as the x approaches some value of c from either the left or the right side. If that does not happen, then we can simply say that the limit does not exist. I'm going to let you abbreviate DNE. I'm not a big fan of abbreviations, but because you're going to be solving so many of these problems, I'll let you go ahead and make that abbreviation. All right, so we're going to take a look at four examples in this video. They're actually going to go fairly quickly here. And so for examples one through seven, they'll be continued in the next video. For each graph of f of x, let's find the required information. So for part A, as x approaches 1 from the left, what is the limit of f of x? Well, here is our 1 approaching from the left. And if I kind of draw on this a little bit to give you an idea, we can see that the y values are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. They eventually get to the point where they're just about equivalent to 1. They're never going to equal 1. Limits are about the journey, not the destination, and so your answer to this is one. You want to be very careful to not jump up to this two and say, oh, I see a dot there. I see a colored in point. Asking you what the limit is of f of x as x approaches one is not the same as asking you what f of one is, which I think is coming up in this problem. If we look at part B and let X approach one from the right, this time we're coming on this side and we notice that the entire trip, the Y value is two every single time, the whole way. We could actually get to the point where X is equivalent to one and we still get that Y value of two. Well, we're not so concerned about the equivalency of two at that point. We just want to see what's the F of X doing and the answer is it's like pretty constantly equal to two. So you can have a limit that looks like that. Now for part C, 
hopefully this is pretty easy because you're going to use this idea up here in the box. And if the two limits in parts A and B do not agree, then you have a does not exist right here. And then for part D, F of 1, we briefly talked about that a moment ago. F of 1 is just simply the value that you see on the function when the X is equal to 1. It's not a really a calculus concept. It's just a basic algebra idea about functions. And that would answer your example 1. Let's take a look at example 2, which is a little peculiar to me. I'm going to talk about this. For this particular problem, we first of all start with this graph in example two doesn't make any sense. And therefore, I am not going to do this problem number two. And the reason is because it's not even a function. This f of x that I'm trying to lay on you doesn't make any sense because it does not pass the vertical line test. You have two different y values for the same value of x. So what I'm going to do is magically change this. Bam! Let's use this guy instead, which if you're following along with my notes packet, I believe that this is the graph that you see in that packet. Now we have a function and we can actually find the answer. So the point I'm trying to make is if you don't have a function, if you're working with something that's not in the family of functions, then we really aren't going to be finding limits per se, because limits are associated with functions. So if we let x approach positive 1 from the left, that's going to be this destination, and I'm going to be traveling on this road, and I find out that the y values are getting closer and closer to about where this open circle is, which would be a y value of negative 1. Doing the same thing, approaching one from the right side. This time I'm on this road, and I find that the y's are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and ultimately somewhat equivalent to about where one would be. Because part A and part D, or part A and part B rather, are not the same answer, we know that we have a limit that does not exist. And then finally, for f of 1 in part D, that's just really an algebra question. What is the y value when x is 1? And we end up with 0. Halfway there, scrolling down, taking a look at example 3. This would be a very good opportunity for you to maybe pause the video, try to work through example 3 on your own, and then resume the video and check your answers. All right, let's take a look. If we are going to find this particular limit as x approaches positive 1 from the left, we're traveling along this road, and we see that the y's get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and ultimately come up to this. And I want you to realize that, that is an open circle on the graph. And so the y value is going to be positive 1. On the right side, we're approaching this way. And again, the y values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where they're going to be also positive 1. Now, because part A and part B are the same, that makes answering part C very simple because it's going to be the same as those two answers. So a lot of times when you're solving a limit as x approaches some C from both sides, you just simply answer it from the left and the right individually, and then that double-sided limit just takes care of itself. Answers are different, does not exist. If the answer is the same, that's your result. Now, f of 1 is a little bit interesting here because you notice that there is no y value when f is equal to 1. And so what we're going to call that, and I don't want anybody to be, um, I guess, a little confused by this, but I'm going to say that that value is undefined. Now, there's a I know a, a, a big kind of, a, you know, issue with what's the difference between undefined and does not exist? Well, by and large, they kind of say the same thing, but they're generally reserved for different ideas. For example, f of 1, that's a function value. That's a value that we should be seeing on this graph. And if you don't see it, it's because 1 has not been defined.
So when some numerical value does not exist, we'll say undefined. But in the case of, let's say, part C for problems one and two, it's more of like a concept. The concept of the limit does not have an answer. And so therefore, we generally use the phrase does not exist. In my class, if a student were to maybe mix those two up, I don't really have a big deal uh, with it. And on the AP exam, it's generally not going to be a problem because those kinds of problems might be reserved towards multiple choice and they would never put both of those possible answers as two different choices. Taking a look at our example four, if you want to pause the video, give it a shot, go for it. And then now let's take a look at its answer. Limit as x approaches 1 from the left. Well, this graph looks very similar to the graph that we just did in number 3, right? We're going to get positive 1 for that limit. If we approach that mountaintop from the right side, we're going to get positive 1 for the right side limit. And because A and B match, that means C is going to be equivalent. The only thing that's different in example 4 is this little dot down here, which is the way that we are going to define f of 1. And so f of 1 is equivalent to negative 2. So the point that I am trying to make is that the presence or lack of presence of some random point when the x value is 1 has no bearing on the answers to a, b, and c. In other words, your limits. So this point could have been up here, it could have been right here, it does not matter. A, B, and C would have still all been 1. The only thing that the presence of that point affects is the value of the function. I hope this helps a little bit, just kind of gradually getting your feet wet with this. We have a few more graphical limits uh, ready for you uh, to take a look at in our next video, so be sure to check those out. In the meantime, keep studying your calculus. We'll see you next time.